What is this? It's more than a lifestyle show. It's a show about living in today's world. I think something is happening. Frankie enthusiastically brings an amazing eclectic mix to the airwaves. You got that right. One of the reasons she's earned legions of loyal fans is very simple. When you listen to the Frankie Boyer Show, you just never know what's going to happen next. So listen for yourself. Here is Frankie Boyer. And welcome. It is nice to have you with us right here on BizTalk Radio. Well, as many of you have heard in the news, Johnson & Johnson has been under tremendous pressure to stop selling talcum powder. And this has been going on for a while. There are now more than 170 nonprofit groups that have called on Johnson & Johnson to stop selling its talc-based Johnson's baby powder worldwide, citing concerns that it contains cancer-causing asbestos. And the groups include educational institutions such as Emory University, activist groups such as Greenpeace, among others. And joining us, by the way, Johnson & Johnson has... Uh, some strong feelings about it, as you can imagine. But joining us to discuss this is a partner at um, Levy Kongsberg, and he's a litigation specialist handling complex personal injury cases involving asbestos and mesothelioma uh, toxin substances is Moish um, Maimon. And and Moish, welcome to the program. Thanks, Frankie. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, you're involved in some very high level cases and, uh, what's, what's really going on with Johnson and Johnson? Why are they not taking it off the market? Well, I think that if you look at their internal documentation and what they say internally, uh, the baby powder product has really been, uh, what they term as the flagship of their franchise. Uh, it's the what they call the golden egg, the image of the mother-baby uh, bond that they use for marketing everything. And they're just afraid that by taking it off the market and admitting to what's happened, uh, they damage their whole brand. Oh, my gosh. So let's kill a few more kids. Let's kill a few more babies and keep the brand intact. Is that basically it? Well, you know, you could talk, people talk themselves into all sorts of things. And, and if the party line is that the product is safe and doesn't have asbestos, then what you do is you ignore the pictures of the asbestos in your product and you ignore the dead body. Gosh. But why, why are we, first of all, why do you think, this is, this is one of my biggest bones of contention here. I, I really have this horrible i get so upset during halloween and different times of the year because chocolate manufacturers import their chocolates and export them and when they export them to europe guess what you know this and i know this they're not allowed to put the fake vanilla they're not allowed to put um dyes in the in the candies because Europeans won't allow it. They will not allow it. What has taken so long that we as Americans will allow that fake junk to be put in all of our products, ingestibles and topicals? Why? I think it goes back to the formation of uh, regulatory bodies that were intended to protect us. And unfortunately, the funding is not there, the oversight is not there, the resources are not there. And so industry, by and large, runs those organizations. In the 1970s, even going back to the 1960s, but starting in the 1970s, uh, the FDA started taking a look at this and the the uh, cosmetic industry led by Johnson & Johnson convinced them to let them self-regulate. Uh, let us come up with the testing for the products. And they came up with testing, which is, you know, something similar to if you wanted to find coronavirus, but use a flashlight and reading glasses from Walgreens. It's just not sensitive <laughs> enough to find the asbestos that's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
do you think that this is um, how much longer is this going to go on? Do you think before I think the pressure really gets too big for for Johnson and Johnson? I think that we've 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 reached some milestones and we've had some watershed moments. I think the Reuters expose a couple of years ago was really a watershed moment. It was everything that was there, but it put it all together and and published it. Uh, Reuters, Bloomberg, New York Times, uh, all the press attention that was brought to bear on it so that the dirty little secrets couldn't remain in the dark anymore. I think another watershed moment was last fall when the FDA tested Johnson's baby powder, uh, employing Johnson & Johnson's own experts to look at it and found the asbestos there. Uh, that's not something you can sweep under the rug, even though they tried to do it. And then now that we've had sizable verdicts against Johnson & Johnson showing that their products uh, cause cancer in many people, we're now seeing appellate courts uphold those verdicts. So I don't think that that... Uh, I think that we're on the trajectory to uh, complete this. Uh, I think that you know the statement by Johnson and Johnson that they're going to stop selling talc in the United States and Canada, but not elsewhere in the world, uh, is really uh, an expression of their understanding that they can't get away with it here without exposing themselves to tremendous civil liability, whereas in other countries they might be able to. But I think that the pressure is going to be so great that they're just going to take it off the market at a certain point in time. Um, you know, you notice that the announcement to take it off the shelves in the United States took place during the uh, pandemic when uh, it doesn't yes. have a large uh, new cycle to deal with. Right. Um, I mean, there are natural products out there, natural ingredients that could be made into this product. Um why do they not want to do that? Why do they not want to go the natural route? So they've been struggling with this since the 1960s, really, knowing that uh, cornstarch as an alternative was right there. They've had formulas for cornstarch baby powder since the 1970s. They've marketed it uh, countrywide and worldwide since 1980. And so it's right there for the taking. And actually, if you look at their sales data, the cornstarch baby powder outsells the talc-based uh, uh, baby powder. I just think that as a corporation and uh, the leadership in the corporation just does not want to admit what they've done and what it means. And once they're able to do that, we're going to see this product off the market, but not until then. And you don't think they're going to reinvent it and try another way of making it? Their egos so are too. Is, is it that their egos are just too uh, involved? I think that at a certain point within a culture like a corporation like Johnson and Johnson, they believe their own narrative, and itself it feeds itself, uh, and they look at the same data over and over again and ignore the same data over and over again. The solution's right there. It's the cornstarch product that's there, that's safe, that has no risk of having. Um, uh, asbestos in it, in their own words. It's absolutely biodegradable. Um, and I think that it yeah. just will take, uh, it just will take some leadership internally to say, hey, why are we even putting anybody at risk? But it's not just there, it's not just this product. We're seeing uh, bears, um, weed killers. We're seeing products in the market that have carcinogenic effects to us as humans and now now more than ever we're so susceptible many of us are so susceptible with covid lurking in the background of everything we do um it just doesn't make sense to me why we wouldn't would not want a more natural approach to products in this day and age Oh, I, I think you're absolutely right, and I think that there is that movement going on, as indicated by groups like Greenpeace, uh, uh, institutions like Emory University that did a start study publishing about over 80 people with mesothelioma from from talc and powder early this year, uh, and I think that the the uh, Monsanto uh, weed killer 
uh, is a good example. I think that the opioid crisis and what's come out uh, from that about the sellers of the opioids, including Johnson and Johnson. Yes, I think all yes, these yes. Liability claims, uh, they're part of a movement that's that's going to, I think. And uh, we're out of we're we're out of time. I'm so sorry, but but I want you to come back and we can have this ongoing conversation about this movement because it's so important. And I know you're a major part of it. Give us the best website people can find out about all the amazing cases that you've worked on to help so many of the. Uh, plaintiffs in various lawsuits sure uh our firm website is www.levylaw.com and i'd be honored to come back anytime thank you so much and we'll be back in a moment this is frankie boyer stay tuned